the Abscondo Podcast. We're living in a culture of violence, a whole system of violence pervading every area of our lives. And a lot of us are fed up. I think this is what the Black Lives Matters movement is about. I think for African Americans and just this history of of horrendous violence against them and discrimination and you know violence of ev- in every f- different form obviously that's what touches them more than anything else and these are the some of the bravest among us that they are perhaps the first this is the first of hopefully many movements in this new era of people rising up against violence in whatever form. But by no means is racism and police brutality the only form of violence in this society. And I talk about this as an American. I don't live in the U.S., although I did most of my adult life, or most of my life, I should say. But this is a, this is a pandemic that is global, and has lasted for thousands of years. And it's that of violence. And I want to talk about all the various forms of violence as our primary way of operating as a society, uh, perpetrated by governments and you know all their agencies and their schools and institutions and prisons, of course, and police, of course. And also how we perpetrate violence on ourselves and one another and our families even. And there is an alternative, and we're going to get to that. So this is worth, you know, this is not just a rant about violence and how unfair the world is, not at all. We're going to get to the alternative. And I believe we're living in a time, the beginning of an era where, after thousands of years of of ego domination, of violence, of oppression, many thousands of years of this type of system, we are going to awaken from this nightmare, this hell that we have created. And I want to talk about how we're going to get there in the coming days, weeks, months, and years. But first, we have to understand what I mean by violence. It has become so normal in our world that we don't even notice it. We don't even, it's like a fish not noticing water. That's all the fish knows. We live with so much violence from the time, well, I mean, even children have to deal with their parents yelling and threatening and shaming each other and blaming. So much violence at home since we're born. And then we're thrown into a school system that uses reward and punishment, which is a form of violence. We have to be very careful what we mean by violence. The definition of violence is pretty broad. Violence is whenever a person tries to, um, you know, change someone else's behavior, get them them to conform according to your rules and your expectations. And this is what, what, where all violence comes from. This belief that you have the right, that you're the authority over someone and you have the right to correct people or to mold people or shape them using whatever means necessary. And the world believes that that violence, primarily reward and punishment, and, and of course punishment includes a lot of different uh, things, which can get very brutal at times, as the police demonstrate again and again. But even reward, let's start with that, the, the most mild form of violence in society. Most people think that reward is, is the opposite of violence, that it's a good thing to reward people for behaving, for getting good grades, for doing a good job. The problem is that you don't really, no one really has the ability to reward anyone. Okay. So the the so-called rewards that we get from, from, you know, from childhood all the way through adulthood, we have false promises. We say, if you behave and get good grades in school, you're going to get a good job and, and be, have a happy life. But that never materializes. The person making that promise doesn't have that authority. It doesn't have the ability to give the child what's being promised. So it's a false promise, or in other words, a lie. 
nobody can give you a reward because we are already complete within. We already have all the love and all the perfection and the beauty. We're complete from the moment we're born. What we need is love. We don't need a reward. Okay? So, now punishment, the flip side of reward, this is for somebody who doesn't want to go along with your, uh, with your lessons of sacrifice, that you have to do this and then you get that. Maybe the person sees through it and doesn't want to. Now you have to use punishment. All right, so you start off with this, you're a good person, you want to get behind this idea of rewarding your children, and you're a teacher, and you want to you you know, teach the rewards of society which don't even exist anymore. You know, you're a boss that wants to promise that you're not, you, know, you, you have this job long term when you don't have that authority to make that promise. Someone above you does. You know, we don't have the power to offer anyone paradise or reward because our, the society we've created is hell, the society based on violence. So forget about reward. It's such a, it's such a false, you know, you don't have the power to even reward yourself, let alone someone else. Okay. So punishment is what happens when someone fails to comply with our promises of rewards. And this is where, you know, you start getting violent, openly, brutally violent, shaming someone, yelling at them, calling them names, saying they're, they're a failure in life. They're stupid holding a gun at them, shooting them, the police I'm talking about now, putting them in prison, the entire system, the legal system, the lawmakers. There's so much punishment. There are signs threatening us everywhere we go. If you do this, here's a fine. There's so many symbols of punishment. Turn on the news media. If you don't wear a mask, this is what's going to happen. So we have this whole system of violence. And through this system, we've taught a lot of people, the system has taught people about violence. And now it's not just the system. It's not just scapegoating like, ooh, if the world would change, if the government would change, that's not going to happen anytime soon. We have to change. And then through us, it will change. And I will get to that. So we've been taught this thought system of violence that it's perfectly legitimate to attempt to change someone else's behavior, to control someone and manipulate someone. And it goes to our spouses, our lovers, our friends, our children, our families. We feel that we have this right because that's what the world showed us. That's what the lesson has been since we were born. And it's a false lesson. And the undoing of this lesson is the awakening. It's the new era, the new, a new earth. It's what, what I believe in the Bible, they, they, you know, they call the end times, the second coming of Jesus Christ. In other words, getting his message finally. It's that simple. And I'll talk about this in great detail. I'll probably wander a little bit in this podcast. There's a lot of ground to cover here. And, and we have a lot of work to do, those of us who get this message. So, We're taught this message of violence. We're taught this this thought system of violence, reward and punishment, manipulation, trying to get something for yourself to keep yourself safe. We're taught fear. We're fearful of being punished or not getting our rewards and suffering. And then you have, you know, people maybe living in poverty who are a desperate, and there becomes a lot. There starts to be a lot of violence within the community directed toward one another. You have gangs in certain communities. You have you know, fist fights and others, whatever it may be. But people are extremely violent to one another, you know, committing crimes, stealing, murdering. And that's not being talked about. We're talking about the police brutality right now, but that's just one tiny piece. And I don't believe you can fix the problem by focusing on one tiny piece when the whole thing is the problem. The whole way of thinking is the problem. And that's what we're going to have to change. I am... Um, I'm a huge fan of the Milwaukee Bucks basketball team. I come from Wisconsin originally, and it's my team. And I love how great they've been doing the past few seasons. That last week, they um, they boycotted a game, Game Five of the series with Miami, and gave a gave a speech about police brutality, and took a stand. And it's wonderful. However, it's not going to work because you cannot just use the the language of you know that the police are guilty and that the system needs to change 
and and use these symbols. We're going to have to dig deeper. We're going to have to find the love within our hearts to change the situation. And we're going to have to understand that it's not as simple as one act of police violence. You're not looking at the big picture of the entire community. The the, 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 the so-called criminal that, that got shot um, also was not innocent. He was also acting within the ego. And so were the police officers and everybody involved. And the response is this mass, massive ego response where we're trying to blame, shame, we're trying to find an oppressor, we're trying to find a victim, trying to find, you know, defend ourselves, trying to judge everything, and trying to use the ego to solve the problems of ego. And if you don't know if you don't know what I'm talking about right now, please read this book called Games Ego Plays by Kevin Fitzmaurice. It's Games Ego Plays. It's a pretty obscure book, but it's worth your time because you will recognize the workings of ego uh, by using the metaphor of a board game where players move between six positions. And that's what um, George Hill and Eric Bledsoe were doing with their speech. Of course, they don't know that, but because their response was the natural conditioned response based on uh, the lessons of this world. So if we're going to change anything, we're going to have to understand what ego is, which arise from the fall, in biblical terms, the idea of Garden of Eden where people were, were innocent and loving and would never use violence, would never lie to each other, and where we got free will, that we have this, this ability to do these terrible things to each other, to err, to make terrible mistakes, to become violent, to set up systems of violence that benefit some, so-called benefit some, even though they're not happy in that system, and, and severely harm others. And we've come to accept that violence is inevitable. And the thing is, in this world, the way that it is, where, where basically everyone, you know, 95% or more of people have severe ego insanity, Yes, these systems are necessary because without them, right now, if we got rid of all the governments and all the police without first learning, without first evolving to where we awaken, where the majority, where the vast majority awakens, there would be chaos and disorder. Okay? There would be theft, there would be crime, there would be out of control behavior with no sensitivity toward other human beings, no understanding of who we really are and our deepest, truest identity, which is love. So, I'm not being naive. I don't. I'm not saying we should. We should, um, you know, call off the governments and the police tomorrow because people aren't ready for this, right? What I am going to describe is a scenario where this message. I mean, your version of it, and the countless, endless, millions of different ways of telling this message. You know, we have a lot of work to do to get this this message out to to create a whole to remember the true thought system, the thought system of truth honesty, the one thought system that's aligned with how reality actually is, when we adopt it, we no longer need systems of violence at all because we're not going to cause any harm. We're not going to be violent. And you might think this is going to be a very difficult, almost impossible task. But then I would ask you, am I, am I Mark Manny, so remarkable? I don't think so. And I learned this lesson and I live it and I have been for five years and I will forever. And there are millions more like me. And I don't think that I'm that extraordinary, but I, t I can tell you one thing. This is a very different thought system from what the world teaches. So we have a lot of work to do. But when you are, when you are exposed to this thought system, there's something within you that instantly recognizes truth and all that illusion of ego and of the world is exposed for what it is, and it falls away naturally. And I want to describe that process and how we make this come about. But first, I want to be very specific. You know, I've been talking about this for many years. This is podcast number 89. I write almost every day. I write a blog entry about perfect love, about awakening, about consciousness. But I want to be very clear that I'm talking about shifting away from this idea of violence, this idea of ego, this idea that you can use attack to prove something as a response to anything that attack is ever justified, that it can possibly have any power to make any real or lasting change. Trade that whole thought system with the recognition that it hasn't worked so far. It's been thousands of years. In your life, it hasn't worked. You've never changed anyone through attack. You might have thought you proved your point, but all you've proven is that you do attack. <laughs> 
and a person sees you as a vicious person who would attack and you teach the lessons of attack and your children and your family attack you and each other and everyone attack only teaches that you would attack it does not teach the lesson you intend to teach because anything without love anything done without love or said without love is is completely impotent it does not it does not teach anything because there's nothing to be learned but love love when you see a situation where you have a standoff with police and you have these hor- horrific these military vehicles and this terrible spotlight and you have this poor man standing there trying to take a stand with his knife in his hand or whatever. I've not really seen the video. I don't pay attention to the news, but I've happened to see an image like that. You know, it's hard to find the love in your heart, but what you have to recognize is that this is what it looks like when when there is none. This is what the world looks like when there's no love involved in a situation. And whenever that happens, there's total chaos, there's violence, and there's error. And the error is lack of love. A Course in Miracles says, sin is where love is not. So if you're talking about sin, it's just that you've done stuff or said stuff without love, without the thought system of love in your in your heart and in your mind. You don't know it. You haven't learned it. The world hasn't taught it to you. You might have been exposed to a religion, which is another egoic institution, which fails largely at teaching this thought system. And then you gave up on the idea of, of some kind of higher truth. But there's only one higher truth, and it is that you are love, this energy of life itself. And that your mind tricks you. A mind that does not know this is an egoic mind. It's a person living in the egoic state, which is sort of ignorant of what some call God, what some call consciousness, what I prefer to call perfect love or God's love, total forgiveness, unity with everyone, seeing past air, loving your neighbor as yourself, loving yourself unconditionally loving your spouse or your your partners or lovers unconditionally no matter what that's the message of jesus and people don't want to talk about what he was trying to talk about they want to talk about um jesus as some kind of a word they're supposed to worship and repeat long enough and so forth and i don't mean to be insulting to any christian out there but i'm saying what was jesus teaching that's what i care about that's what you should maybe care about is his message because the message is pure truth as same message, of course, in miracles, same message as many other religions, if you look at what they're pointing to. But I'm not saying go there through religion. I'm saying go there. There's plenty of ways to go there. You can read my ebooks for free at abscondo.com. Um, it's a link there. You can you can listen to these podcasts. You can, you know, of course, you know, there's obviously my stuff. There's, there's millions of others doing this. There's there's A Course in Miracles, which is um, really the source of, of, of this information uh, and my transformation. There's Eckhart Tolle. There's Wayne Dyer, there's Deepak Chopra, um, Marion Williamson. Um, you know, there's many, many other sources. Um, and, you know, I'd be happy to write to me and I'll give you some some ideas for what to read to, to learn this thought system. It's not just me making stuff up here. This this is like ancient, this is, you know, the Lao Tzu, uh, Lao Tzu wrote about this in the Tao Te Ching. Uh, I think it was like 4,000 years ago around the time of Buddha. This is not new. But the world teaches a very different lesson. The world threatens us all the time. Even the idea of of having to go to school, mandatory school, you know, forcing children to wear masks in school. This is child abuse. This is violence against our children, which is happening in many countries uh, as we go into September here. The idea of forcing us to pay taxes to a government that oppresses us, that's violent. Is all these, you know, any law is, is violent. It's, it's creating fear. It's teaching fear. It's teaching that the authority is not within you, that it's somewhere else in, in the, the large brick, stone, cold buildings. And, and there's so much damage being caused. And what's happening in the world right now is that the ego is going insane. For all these years, for you know, for thousands of years, the ego's been pretty functional. It's been able to get things done. Uh, there's been some kind of stability in this system where people just kind of blindly went along with it, and you didn't have you know basketball being canceled, you didn't have borders being closed, you know, laws being disregarded by governments all around the world in, in a heartbeat, 
borders being opening, borders being closed, face masks being mandatory outside in parks, then not. Oh, it's just such a mess. No concerts, no events, but yet pools are are open and, and, and you know, it's total insanity. And the idea that we had freedom and democracy, the idea that we had personal rights, is just gone. And then you have police violence and brutality and police murdering people. Then you have people murdering people. And you have signs everywhere about threats and symbols of violence, barbed wire, electrical fences, guns with police, guns for people to carry around. You have arguments. You have threats. You have hatred, open hatred against your brothers and sisters. You have road rage. You have all this debate and argument. You have divorces because of cheating, because of sex. You have jealousy that causes violence against people you claim to love. You have parents disowning children. You have bullies. This is the world that the ego has created. And it's all through one simple error. All this stuff is being done without love. We don't even know what love is. We think love is what happens between just two people in a marriage where you get the person to behave and obey your rules and don't do anything wrong. Don't flirt with somebody else. Don't have sex with someone else. Don't want to. Don't write to someone else. Do what I say. Clean the house. Treat me like a king or queen. That's what we call love, and that's violence, of course. That's a relationship of violence. It's an illusion of union, but it's still separation. It's still pure ego. There's no love there. There might have been love in the beginning, but at the same time, everyone knows what love is, and we recognize it when it happens, and it happens whenever we shut off our minds. Our minds will never take us toward love. Love comes. Love is what happens when we just exist without paying attention to our thoughts. Our thoughts deceive us all the time. The voice in the head is not who you are. You're the one observing that voice in the head. If you get mad at someone, recognize that as insanity. That's the ego. That's the mind being insane. Learn to, to calm yourself down by accepting that feeling. Let it melt away as you just sit there and accept it quietly. And then go out and deal with the situation when you're calm. I'm not saying to force calmness. I'm saying just accept when, you're, when you get mad, when there's what Eckhart Tolle calls a pain body attack. And if it happens, you're triggered, non-reaction. Go off on your own, calm down, and deal with the situation in love. Learn the thought system of love. What is love? What does love do? How does it feel? They say that God is love. And yet so many Christians hate anyone who, like me, who finds God through you know, through, through outside the church structures and they attack me and they use hatred and attack. That's not love. They say God is love. Well, love is God. It's the same thing. It's the energy of God. And it's found not through doing, but through being, through meditation, through learning to create gaps of thought and when you learn this thought system and you apply it, I assure you that your problems will melt away. You will not have problems because you'll begin telling the truth about everything because the truth is beautiful and it's loving. And you will be free and you will not be attacked because you're not attacking anyone else. Of course, every, every attack comes at you because you've attacked someone else. And the people who do not love, the people who carry hatred in their hearts, will naturally be repelled away from you. You don't have to uh, run away from anything. They will just leave you because they don't, they don't know how to deal with that energy of love. And what you will find is your world will shift for a while, drastically, and you stay centered and you stay in that energy of love. And then at some point, the adjustments have occurred. All the error has been removed from your life, the years and years of error. You might lose people. And it, it can be painful, but it's what has to happen to adjust to truth. And you'll be left with a life of truth. And you'll become a teacher of this without even wanting to or trying to, because this is how you naturally think. And there's millions of us who've done this, and, and it's going to continue to compound because we are speaking the truth here. 
and the world is revealing the insanity. It's totally insane what's happening in the world, and the insanity is escalating and becoming more obvious to everyone, and it's a wonderful time to be alive because we're on the verge of a new era of love. The consciousness revolution is when people realize this message and apply it on a massive scale. And the way we apply it, and this is a very important part of this of this message, is that when you see violence and injustice, when you recognize it for what it is, the natural, I mean the natural, the conditioned response, the world taught you to fight back. But by fighting back, you're using more violence and you're making the whole thing real. You're changing nothing. You're teaching that violence is the way, which is the problem to begin with. You're in this terrible, ridiculous, insane loop. And some protest turns into this tone of yelling back and fighting back and shaming and blaming other people. This is still ego. This is changing nothing. If you want to transform the world in, in, in the way that I'm talking about here into a, into a, a loving, free system where you, there is no violence... The way to do that is to withdraw your attention, to take your attention away from the violence, to stop watching the news, to stop reading about and watching the terrible things happening. And by the way, I'm glad for all the digital media and all the, all the everybody has you know phone have cameras and everything else because now we see the insanity on a massive scale, but you've seen enough of it already. I'm sure you have. Now you can withdraw your attention from it and give it, no, give it none of your reality. Because all that's true and real is that which is loving. So all your attention needs to only go on that. And every problem and every challenge you face, the loving response is the only appropriate response. And it will solve the problem. So you don't need to get into conspiracy theories. You don't need to get angry about something or get outraged about something or fight something. You need to to withdraw your attention to make sure you stay in love and freedom within you and go deeply within you. And when something happens in the world that you happen to notice, then speak freely about it. Speak honestly and truthfully about it from that place of love and love being the truth about it. But don't seek it out. Don't go out there and try to fight it. Just go through your day centered in love and teach it to people who are in your life. And if we do this, this is what's called the consciousness revolution. And eventually there will be a situation where the the institutions, the governments, and everybody else are trying to still threaten us. We don't even notice. They're telling us to wear masks, but we never even got that memo. (laughs) They're, you know, they're, they're threatening us with, 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 with consequences that we don't even know. And so there's this, you know, if nobody obeys anything, it just falls apart. It doesn't, it doesn't even happen. We're giving it power by giving it our attention. So don't let anyone tell you that withdrawing your attention from violence is selfish. It's the way out from violence. It's the way, it's the path toward truth redemption, salvation. And this is the only thought system, the only one that's true. Everything else is error. I'm going to leave it at that for now. Obviously, there's more to say about all that, and that's what and that's why I keep on keep on writing every day and keep on talking about it and just finding a way to because you have to because you just have to, and 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 you know you you just called to when you awaken you're called to share that awakening and it sounds strange to everyone who's who thinks the violent world is real and they're going to fight it through enough shame and guilt and blaming it just isn't going to happen. Attack attack has no power. I'm going to leave it with a new song from one from my album called Life Flight, which I made, um, which I I recorded just a couple months ago. This song is called Strangers. Thank you so much. If you're still listening to this podcast, get in touch. Um, my email is mark.manny, M-A-N-N-E-Y, at abscondo.com. Visit my blog at abscondo.com and check out my books. And um, just let's stay in touch. I love you. Days 
days I'm not afraid of strangers Sometimes I even look them straight in the eye And these days I'm not afraid of saying Just what exactly is on my mind I'm taking what is mine Do what I want to with my time I guess I define my way alone I've never been quite this wide open Just ready to embrace whatever comes my way But these days I walk these streets hoping You're not just a beggar who's gonna ask me for some change Keeping what is mine To what I want to with my time I guess we have to find our way alone Days I'm not afraid of strangers. Some days someone's gonna take me by surprise. And these days I'm on my guitar playing. I don't care if you listen or if you have the time. I guess I'm doing fine. Do what I want to with my time. That's how I found my 